This episode is brought to you by Moxfield, the official deck building website of Play to Win. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CDH. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cameron. And I'm also Cameron. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm Tyler. This is Tyler. You know Tyler from playing on the show many times, but now you get to see his beautiful face. Face reveal. Here it is. Welcome, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Should we talk about Midnight Hunt? I'm incredibly excited to talk about Midnight Hunt. There are a few good choices for CDH in Midnight Hunt, but... <laughs> Only maybe a few, but there's a lot that are close, um, and we're going to talk about them all today in color coordination. Cameron. All right, so we're going to start off with the white cards from the set. And by the way, if you want to follow along with us, there is a Moxfield link that we have in the description of this video. Um, so pull up a second tab, and you can do that there. Don't forget, this video is brought to you by Moxfield, so definitely go check them out. Uh, they're a great uh, supporter of the show, and they're really the only deck-building website that we use at all. Um, it's just very easy to read, very easy to build decks. Definitely go check out Moxfield. And best play testing. Best play testing, too. Awesome. We have played with people on Spell Table where they are just showing their Moxfield in their browser on yeah. play test mode, and that's how they're playing in a deck. Yeah. And you know what? It's not that bad. I mean, I'd rather play in paper, but... You can still see the cards. You can read them. You can still see the cards. That's right. All right. First card we're going to go over is Curse of Silence. So this is a white for an enchantment aura curse. Uh, you enchant a player, and as Curse of Silence enters the battlefield, you name a card. Spells with the chosen name enchantment enchanted player cast costs two more to cast and whenever enchanted player cast a spell with the chosen name you may sacrifice curse of silence and if you do draw a card so this card is basically a stacks piece for your for one player's commander that replaces itself after its, its effect is no longer of use what do you guys it no longer does a good job well i think the biggest problem is that it's so specific to one player and for two mana in white which is already the best stacks color you have access to all sorts of effects that reduce the cost of all spells so oh. slowing down one player specifically with only the upside of the card draw and it costs one is just i don't think good enough in a world of like you know thalia's it it is card draw in white but i yeah i kind of agree i don't think it's quite there but it does do one thing really well and if you have one ad nauseum player in your play group and you just for some reason cannot beat them this is an extra card you can throw in your deck but overall i wouldn't be very excited about jamming this in a ton of cdh decks it's kind of like funny like against gitrog or like or a deck like that that only wants to get their commander out so they can win the game and you name that and they look at their hand and they're like oh my god i can only get to six mana and now i need to like hope i can get something else like there's there's very niche corner cases that this works and it draws you a card which is kind of nice but i mean i'm, I'm kind of there with you guys i don't know what i'm taking out of a deck to put that's the biggest in. one yeah what do you take out of a cdh deck to put this in probably yeah. nothing yeah. i'll tell you what you could you could replace a card in your deck with our next option here which is fateful absence so this is one in a white for an instant it says destroy target creature or planeswalker its controller investigates i can't believe this is not a in the the black area of the Black has just been, everything has yeah. been removed from black really. Reanimation is moving to white and Boros. Kill spells are moving more and more to white. Black gets nothing anymore. Well, but I mean, black actually got a bunch of fantastic removal spells for this set. It's just like, we're not looking at them because it's like, eh, it's black removal for two mana. Like, right, yeah. It's par for the course. It's already been done a thousand times. And that's a little bit of the issue with this one too, because especially in our format, Swords of Plowshare and Path to Exile still probably come before this card, right? Well, I highly agree There aren't with enough that. Planeswalkers yeah. to make it double the mana worth it um but like you said it is an option if you are in low color white and you're not playing thalia effects like you're in heavy control yeah. this might be just like another removal spell if you know that their narset part of veil is at your tables this might be something that you could be interested in that's true like getting rid of a planeswalker is not something that path and swords can do right hero's downfall i think is the best option that does that and it's three mana versus two and it's two one white versus two black so it's it's better than a card that already exists even though hero's downfall sees no play in our format a lot of what you see in these lists that we do are like cards especially in the monocolored sections is like cards that are really good in the monocolored decks in the format that are going to like replace other worse options so like this is not something we'll see in kenrith but like like maybe teshar wants this or sure something like yeah that. i was just gonna say mono white maybe because pungify you and the like you have in blue in red you have the lightning bolts of the world and black you have actual good removal and 
I guess maybe in green. <laughs> I, I really, I think you need to be after the Planeswalker side of this. If your meta specifically is dominated by Planeswalkers, and there's not a ton, but Karn, Narset, there are a couple in our format that see play. If your specific meta is dominated by those cards, this could be an upgrade. If you have like Swords to Plowshare and Path to Exile, maybe you cut Path for this for the ability to get rid of Planeswalkers. But in a blind meta, I wouldn't do that. How much do we value Investigate here, like for the opponent? Uh, yeah, it I... I think that is bad. I mean, you know, especially if they're if they're a blue deck, you're giving them um, the option to hold up mana for interaction and then spend it to draw a card. That's the thing. Like significant downside. And the card quality in this format is ooh, very high. So like, if you're hitting a stacks piece, like they could draw like a force of will after that or something like that. So like, there's there's a lot of instead of like draft where like they can get like a, a common that's not really gonna do too much. You know, I I, I see where you're going. It does weigh a little bit differently. Um, all right, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about Vanquish the Horde. This one is actually CDH playable. Yes. I'm pretty sure. Yes, this one I'm incredibly excited about. This is an eight mana, six and two white for a sorcery, right? Already we're like, this is CDH Love this playable. eight mana card. <laughs> all right. Hey, this is Commander. This is where we get to do this. But this is this is it. Uh, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Destroy all creatures. So it's a white blasphemous act. It's significantly better though. It does, there's a lot less creatures that, no, there's a lot less creatures that you need and six is so much easier than 13, right? Right, yeah, but two is so much harder than one, which is why Blasphemous Act might still be better for me. Yes, but so the way that I think about it is that every one of your opponents has to have two creatures out for this to cost two mana. Two, just two creatures, which yeah. is almost always that that is yeah. the case. No, that's a good point, um, yeah. And two, like, we're getting a lot, like two mana Wrath is the cheapest that we have a Wrath in this format. Blasphemous Act doesn't see play because it's, it's rare that you can get it to cost one mana because there's just not that many creatures at all the time. And Ad Nauseam is in the front. And Ad Nauseam, you're not gonna, yeah. I mean, you're not playing this in the Ad Nauseam deck either. Exactly. But yeah, and that and that's a big issue with it, obviously, is that it has a big cost. So Dark Confidant, Ad Nauseam, you can't really play this with black spells. A lot of the good ones, it's just gonna hit you, hit you too hard. But I think this one is a very consistent two mana Wrath, which we do not have until now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Vile Smasher too. You know, you have to kill your Vile Smasher. But if you ha if you're playing Vile Smasher, you can get next someone for eight. I there guess. There you go. Yeah. Vile Smasher. Ishai. Vile Smasher. Ishai. Ishai. Sands Green Control. Let's go. Oh my God. All right. Uh, I'm I'm putting that together. We're gonna see what that looks like. All right. All right. We're gonna move on. So that's all the white cards. That the mono white cards. <laughs> that's all the ones that we thought were even close to playable. Exactly. We have one maybe and two probably not. Yes. All right. So we can. Keep track for your bingo boards out there. Um, all right, so our first blue card is Consider. This is a blue mana for an instant that says, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Draw a card. Surveil one, draw. It's better than Opt. This is significantly better than Opt. Almost the only thing you can say about it. Yeah. So Some that Rashmi plays Opt. Rashmi might want to play this card too. Um, what's the other one? I feel like Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet, Baral. Maybe Baral wants to play something like this. I will say there are cases where I think this scry um, is specifically, like weirdly in Kinnon, like you can't, you kind of care about what is on the bottom even, and you are not going to want a graveyard stuff, so once in a while scry, scry might be better. is meaningfully better, but I think the vast majority of the time surveil is better. If you're trying to breach... Like, yeah, this is the veil yeah. kind of can kind of help too with yeah. that. I think if you're in probably like three or more colors, I probably wouldn't touch consider. Um, I don't think consider goes in something like Kess, which is like one yeah. of the only decks that really uses cantrips that's above like three more colors. Um, but in like two or fewer color decks that are heavily interested in instants and sorceries, I think consider can make the cut. I'd consider it. <laughs> <laughs> and someone had to say it. Come on. <laughs> It was on the table. All right, so Drown in Dreams is our next card. So this is from the, the Commander set, by the way, from the Commander set. So uh, it is X, 2, and a blue for an instant. Choose one. If you control your Commander as you cast a spell, you may choose both. Target player draws X cards, or target player mills twice X cards. 
I feel like I've seen this card before. It's the weirdest thing. I feel like I run it in a deck. So obviously this is just better stroke of genius is, is the big thing. It has another mode. Honestly, I think you very rarely ever use the mill mode. Because Probably never, yeah. Usually if you're casting this, you're casting it to um, to knock someone out of the game. That's that's what you're using stroke of genius for or to draw, or your, draw your whole deck. deck. Right? Yep. Yeah. But if you're in a breach deck and there's you're in a situation where like really the best thing you have to do and the way you have to get out of it because maybe your brain freeze is gone somehow is to mill yourself a bunch of cards you have the option it's expensive but you have the option um this one is also it's notable that it's like a stroke of genius that gets rid of top deck tutors if you need to if you really want to summon vampiric tutors and you're like well shit i don't have a counter spell but i can at least make the mill of that card that they tutored for that's something for four mana. for four mana um but stroke of genius already does see play in kinnon right in decks that want to use that infinite x mana to draw their whole deck stroke already sees play this is one of the few cases where this card i can confidently say is strictly better than stroke of genius yeah the only reason like is like the is the frustration argument of like meddling mage if someone meddling mage is like this then stroke of genius is better but besides that in every other situation this does exactly what stroke does plus maybe another thing yeah we'll just have to come back and revisit this when they finally print counter target modal spell yeah <laughs> yeah something <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah this card's good draws cards if you have infinite mana draw your whole deck i think this will definitely see play 100 percent. yeah all right, so Fading Hope is our next card. This is another one-mana instant. Uh, it says, return target creature to its owner's hand. If its mana value was three or less, scry one. It's blue, by the way. I didn't say that, but it is. All of these cards are blue. We're in the blue category right now. Um, this one's not great. Bounce spells are normally at one mana. You want them to bounce any permanent. The reason why I consider this one is if you're really heavy on Dockside and you really want to bounce your Dockside specifically with your spells, the extra scry one is an option. Um, and it also acts as if you need to. In CDH, it, it bounces almost every creature. Um, ideally, like just Chain of Vapor is better than this. Um, but the scry one is interesting. And if you're bouncing your own thing a lot, I think it could be something. It certainly is. If you're in for that effect, um, yeah, the Scry one is certainly good. I still think Stern Dismissal is strictly better in, in CDH as well, though, If even if you're going to run one one mana spell, because that's return target creature or enchantment to its own. Okay, it doesn't give you the Scry. But um, that might be only opponent controls. Okay. Uh, I should have Maybe I should have looked that up. Sorry, that was top of my head. Stern Dismissal. Yeah, so with the... The return target creature or or enchantment and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Oh, so much worse. Yeah, you want to be able to target your you own stuff. You want to be able to target your own stuff. Sorry. No, that's okay. They, all these bounce spells do almost the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that is true. Creature is limiting. Like, you can't storm off with this the way that Chain of Vapor lets you storm off with all of your mana rocks. Um, but the dock side point is very interesting. If you, yeah, if you want to bounce your dock side every time, this one at least lets you scry one while you do it. And this is the second best blue bounce spell that we will review in this CDH yes. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Here we go. Oh, the next one. <laughs> Geist Wave. This one costs one more. It's one in a blue for an instant. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you controlled that permanent, draw a card. This one's better for bouncing your dock side, maybe. Yeah, this one's better for bouncing almost anything. <laughs> um, it, it doubled the mana as the last one, which is, you know, significant. Two is much, much more than one. But the things that this does, non-land permanent, non potential to draw a card, big upsides on this one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, of course, we see occasionally Winds of Rebuke or Into the Royal or things like that, um, usually in blue one to two color decks. Um, and in those cases, I think there's enough upside here that this might replace some of those. Yep. Um, if you're bouncing your own stuff and drawing a card, that's probably better than Into the Royal, where the upside is pay four to draw a card. Sure, yeah, definitely. It, it definitely, it seems like lately I want between one and three copies of something that bounces a permanent, um, and then some Sometimes Winds of Rebuke is the right choice. Sometimes, you know, uh, if you're Winds of Rebuke, if you're Underworld Breach, snap if you have Gaia's Cradle, snap back if you really want to make sure yeah. you don't invest the initial mana. There's a whole bunch of different reasons why whichever bounce spell will work perfect for your deck. In some decks, this this might be the one. But, of course, this all presumes you are already running Cyclonic Rift because that does not get cut for this. Like, yeah. there's no... no. There's no I still think Cyclonic Rift should go in many more decks than it does. I do I'm not see sure it off. i all of us are playing Cyclonic Rifts in our blue decks right now, and it's... You need it for when things go wrong. You don't expect it for, to get to seven mana, but sometimes you do. Everything. It fixes everything. It's your only out to everything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, so Geist Wave. Geist Wave, apparently we liked it a little bit more than Fading Hope. I think so. I think I would give it a higher rating. All right, so the next one's a familiar card, everybody. This is Lear, Disciple of the Drowns. Uh, this is three mana, 
Uh, no, it's not. It's three and two blue uh, for a legendary creature human wizard. It says uh, spells can't be countered. Each incident sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. The flashback cost is equal to that card's mana cost. It's a... She's a 3-4. We recently played this on the main channel. This was in our Midnight Hunt set show. Yeah. Uh, we all know how that went. Uh, it did not go out very well for Lear, but I will say we did play two games prior in practice. And it was good. They were three-player games, and it did perform much better in that scenario. So if you don't have three friends and you have two friends, I would highly recommend Lear, especially if they're playing creature-based decks. Yeah, this is um, a high tide commander. This is yeah. another um, Jace Finn's Prodigy is the main one that does this, what this deck does in CDH right now. Um, Lear also does high tide things. You can cast high tide and then flash back high tide and then all your lands, islands make many, many, many mana. You can tap things so many times, so if you want to furiously masturbate and you have something against Orvar, like this is your commander. Yeah, this is your one. If you want to play this version of Mono Blue Storm with Lair. Yeah. You can definitely do it. The big issue, spells can't be countered. That's everyone's spells. So, That's yeah, your you opponent's spells. You definitely have to play around that specific. Think ahead. You have to hold up yeah. a bounce, you know, a bounce spell, like something that can bounce a spell to their hand. You have to hold up removal if you're planning on playing this, or you have to be ready to win immediately. Play it, and then immediately high tide, flashback, high tide, frantic search, flashback, frantic search, and begin your engines. Yeah. Eventually, you can finish on some sort of storm finish, whatever it is, um, but... Yeah, layer's cool. Is there is there any case where um, this goes in like just blue ba blue black reanimator decks? Is it good enough to protect a combo turn? That's interesting. It could be uh, five mana is a lot to protect something, but if you're in yeah. blue black, if you're reanimating, I, I mean, yeah. if you're playing like I don't know how many decks play like victimize, but that might be like an interesting target if you're like victimizing to reanimate two things and one of them is this and something else like this and a Razakath. That can be. It's probably just worse than I all your like other reanimation like, targets. To counter the the victimize before you can even get right. Yeah, <laughs> they're out in that case. Yeah. Then yeah, so it's just it's just a little. Layer is interesting slow. though. It has interesting words. Uncounterable. Yeah. Flashback. Has but powerful things. Exactly. Powerful things. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to uh, talk about Malevolent Hermit now. So this is a uh, one and a blue for a creature human wizard. It's a 2-1. And for a blue mana, you can sacrifice it to counter target non-creature spell unless it's controller, controller play... Wow, it's controller pays three. Um, it also has Disturb for two and a blue. Uh, Disturb specifically says that you can cast this card from your graveyard transformed for its Disturbed cost. So it transforms into Benevolent Geist, which is a creature spirit wizard with flying. Non-creature spells you control can't be countered. And if it were to be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. But now it's a 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> and that's the relevant point. <laughs> that's the relevant part yes. there. Oh. <laughs> so this card does a lot of what we were talking about from Lyre of like being able to protect things out of the graveyard. But to me, this is my pick for actual best card in the set. I think Malevolent Hermit is crazy good. Its front side is certainly playable, but its backside is incredibly good in Underworld Breach strategies if you're milling your deck. I really think it's is basically like another Grand Abolisher. Um, it's, it's one more mana than Grand Abolisher to flash it back. Um, or to disturb it, but I, I think it being able to be a counter spell on the front and also protect your things on the back, this is a really good card. Knowing the hoops people will jump through to get um, a Busseju onto the battlefield, like, just tells you that this is great. Right, yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's trying to do the same thing, and then on the front, it's Miscast, and Miscast yeah. is not terrible. I don't want to pay three for Miscast, but I'll live. Yeah, <laughs> it's still something, yeah, it's still something. Two and then one later is definitely easier than three, but that right. the two one is not a good spot to be in if you're just putting. Two no, unfortunately into for me, I rated this way too highly in my pre-releases because I was thinking the CDH brain. And I was like, oh man, it counters stuff and it flips over, and in that just does not matter when you're playing limited. You're someone plays a four four and you're like, shit, I don't know what to yeah. do now. Yeah, yeah. Well, and someone cast a bad three minute spell, and I'm like, dude. Do I even want to counter that? Great. Like, All right. I'm walled here now. Okay. Another good thing to point about this one is it is a uh, counter spell on a creature. So things like Imperial Recruiter can actually find this. So if you know that an Ad Nauseam deck is about to go for Ad Nauseam just barely and you can count their mana, you can Imperial Seal for Imperial Recruiter for this if you have that. So decks like um, Brawlin and Shabraz, which really use a lot of those Recruiter effects, this could be another option in there. 
I will say though, um, counter spells that are telegraphed on your board can be frustrating because your opponents are always going to make you spend it before they spend any of their interaction because they know you have it. So they yeah. will pass until you're you're on priority and That's make true. you spend it. Yeah. But um, but you kind of want them in your graveyard anyway because the other side is the good side. So. Yeah, and um, it's as a last resort. It's an option, right? It's an option that you have. It's not what you want the card for, but it can play that role if you need it to. Yeah, I really like this one a lot. Um, all right, the next one is Suspicious Stowaway. This is another two-mana creature, one in a blue, for a human rogue werewolf. Frustratingly, the, the best werewolf in this set, in my opinion, is in blue-green for some reason, but keep going. Of course that's what would happen. It's the best color. Um, so it's a 1-1, one, one, and it can't be blocked. Whenever Suspicious Sto Stowaway deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card, and it has Daybound. Um, but it, when it transforms, it is a seafaring werewolf. Uh, this also can't be blocked. And when it draws, I'm sorry, when it deals damage to a creature, to a player, draw a card, and it has Nightbound. Mm hmm. So this is our first instance of uh, Daybound and Nightbound. And uh, for the most part, it seems like it's a pain in the butt to kind of keep track of. <laughs> yep. Uh, Daybound and Nightbound is not super yeah. fun to track, and then unfortunately, um, once you play it, you have to track it for the rest of the game, yep. and it matters on w what each player casts on their own turn, so not only do you have to track it, your opponents have to track exactly. it. Exactly. So they are going to kill you first, because they hate you now. Exactly. Um, but, <laughs> but this is this card is really good, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a Dark Confidant. It's just another two-mana thing that draws a card a turn, roughly. Um, well, other, also, one thing to note, that I did not fully understand about Daybound and Nightbound, even when we played, Nightbound is much different than I thought. If it's Nightbound, your werewolves enters flipped. Oh, yeah. They're just flipped right away. Don't I didn't know that until that, literally just a couple of hours ago. Um, so in CDH, this will come up very often when your opponent has also played a suspicious stowaway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's not like there's other day about Nightbound cards. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's not going to be a ton that, that see a lot of play. But um, this one, I think, does a lot. It loots, it draws cards. You guys said enough, yeah. Yeah, I... I I do think, though, I, I feel like because it's Seafaring Werewolf, I feel like they missed the boat. Like, this could have been the worst, like, flavor lose in Ixalan, and then they just, like, cut it like, ah, werewolf pirates, we're going too far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, it can't be all of it. Yeah. All right, pirates, dinosaurs, yeah, werewolves, too. There we go. <laughs> no, get out. It was a tribal set, so they, they that really That set did. was infuriating. We yeah. don't That's talk about why Ixalan that. was bad. It, it, it had <laughs> nothing to do with the card It was so quality. silly. It felt like they, it, it was such a silly set. That one frustrated me so bad we're, we're gonna do a whole other rant about <laughs> ixalan in a separate podcast uh but this next card is another two mana creature this is a two mana one three it's a human wizard called triska decophile it says you have no maximum hand size and at the beginning of your upkeep if you have exactly 13 cards in your hand you win the game but you i am stunned that you pronounced that right the first time <laughs> i'm just oh, yeah. blown away <laughs> i've heard a lot of people say it since then so i <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. You are you are all good. Uh, so, by the way, everybody, you can also pay three and a blue to draw a card. It's an Azur Mage. Uh, two mana creatures that says win the game on it. I just thought it was worth noting for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, obviously, this is Nothas' Oracle, but this card says win the game on it for two mana. You have to go through a decent amount of hoops to have exactly 13 cards in your upkeep. Yeah. yeah. The problem with win the game at your upkeep, though, is like that triggered ability is, is going to be like seen from a mile away by every one of your opponents yeah. which makes it so look easy at me, to everybody look at me yeah. i am yeah. trying to win now. you're gonna have to like final fortune into this or something like that like that's like the only main way that i can see the seeing play and i honestly don't think this will see play yeah so we're already at like a 15 card combo that we're getting to well not even because if you just add nauseam for a bunch of cards and are able to cast this and final fortune and then that's it you just you can i guess you have to still find a way since you don't have a maximum hand size you have to find a way to get rid of the other ones like you have to have like Putrid you have to have like a discard outlet or yeah. something too. That actually sounds pretty hard if you draw enough cards to check. Yeah, get so it's, it's probably yeah. just more difficult than Thassa's Oracle, right? But this is the yeah. card that like if and when Thassa's Oracle ever gets banned, which I'm sure it won't, this is probably what Grixis players are going to look to next as like a backup laboratory maniac. Yeah, backup lab, sure, but still worse than lab NGs for sure. Yeah, yeah probably still worse than lab NGs, so maybe it doesn't even see play even then. That's true, yeah. It just says win the game on it. We have to talk about yeah. it. Think for two mana and win the game, someone's going to figure out a way to break it in half. We're just not thinking of it. Exactly. All right, so that was the last blue card. So we're going to move on to the black cards from the set then. We're going to start off with a real banger here. Infernal Grasp. This is one in a black for an instant. Destroy target creature. You lose two life. How did it take him this long to make this card? 
I've been I've been wanting this card forever. Just two mana destroy target creature in my in black. That's what? it. Lose two life is a much better downside than give your opponent a clue token. All right. So our next card is Jadar Ghoul Caller of Nephalia. Uh, this is a legendary creature, human wizard. It's a one one. At the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with Decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. Uh, Decayed, by the way, uh, means that the creature can't block, and when it attacks, you sacrifice it at the end of combat. This card is a lot better than I thought it was. I first thought it was like a, uh, just if you controlled no creatures, but I I'm realizing that it now says no creatures with Decayed. Yeah. That's a significantly better. It's similar to Loyal Apprentice. Uh, I think Loyal Apprentice is much better because it makes hasty fires that are extremely good at attacking for Timna, and Loyal Apprentice yes. is only good in Timna decks. But this thing makes a body every turn, so long as you can get rid of the body every turn. Yeah. Right. Some decks might be interested in that. For your village, right? That kind of thing. Yeah. De decks that were already like, maybe I will run Ophiomancer, like, are, sure. are going to be interested in this card. But other than that, probably not. Yeah, other than that, probably but not. But step is definitely better than upkeep in most situations. Yeah, you get it right away. Yeah, you can get it right away, which is yeah. which is good. We're just going to move on to the next card. It's, this card's not very good, but it's almost good. It's almost good. Yeah. Two mana almost for two good. bodies immediately, or almost immediately, and then consistently yeah. create a body that yeah. can be abused yeah and there, there's some combo that gets run with something like ophiomancer right but i think it requires one toughness for the isn't the, i think i'm not sure to be honest i'm not familiar enough on ophiomancer but i do know yagmoth uses a lot yeah that's what i meant is um yagmoth combo but yeah. yagmoth yeah like yagmoth might be a commander that would want something like this that you can reuse stuff every turn and right, but the value. two toughness is much worse than yeah. the one toughness in sure. that case yeah definitely yeah all right, so the next card is Lord of the Forsaken. This is four and two black for a creature demon. It is a 6-6 six, six with flying and trample. Uh, for one black, you can sacrifice another creature to have target player mill three cards. And you can pay one life to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, but you can only spend that mana to cast spells from your graveyard. I think this card's great. It, it is. This card is cool. This is a channel for... Yogmoth's Wild cards. Underworld Breach cards, more specifically. Yeah, that too. It's just cast cards from your graveyard. It doesn't matter how. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's flashback or something. It is any way that you're doing it. I think this is a great reanimation target to pair with something like Razaketh if you're looking in an Underworld Breach deck. Sacrificing creatures to mill cards, this can kind of act as your um, brain freeze if you're not in blue, maybe, um, and paying one life for mana. If you're playing an Underworld Breach deck, Stitcher Supplier is kind of already a card. This card makes all of your creatures into dead Stitcher Suppliers and gives you a whole ton of mana, which Razaketh, although Razaketh is good at doing that with LED, this is just another target. Yeah, and this yeah. isn't even, you might want this and LED because right. sometimes you're tight on mana even with LED coming out each turn. Right. And if you can just turn the life into the generic cost for everything, then have LED only worry about your colored mana cost, yeah. it probably smooths out some some lines with uh, Underworld Yeah, Beach. certainly. I like what you said about being your brain freeze because I feel like if you're playing the, like a Jund kind of storm deck, you could play life and then that way you have like all these other creatures that you can use to really start fueling and instead of storming i mean you still have to have a bunch of black mana but like dark life, red yeah life death is already a card that you really want to be running in razakath style reanimation decks and it also really works well with lord of the forsaken you can turn all your lands into creatures sacrifice them and mill your graveyard a whole bunch yeah exactly and then you just have your life still as a resource to be able to flashback everything else it lets you use the whole buffalo this is an expression that i like it lets you use every ounce of your you can use every ounce of life every card you can make use of everything that you possibly can with lord of the forsaken the tricky part is it's a six mana six six so you have to reanimate it basically or dark ritual or you you know mean you can do there are black rituals reign of filth and cabal ritual that can help you cast this guy but really you're probably going to want to reanimate yeah, this not stuff. casting it honestly that's for yeah, sure. yeah but definitely. it's it's half of a combo piece yeah, so, yeah it can work really well with underworld breach any card that can work really well with underworld breach is probably a good card exactly yeah i, so. I wish i put this in the florian deck that i made for our for the yeah. channel like that yeah. this would have been a great add to florian but yeah. i saw a six six that cost six and i was like I probably don't need to read this, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here's one that I really want to read. Uh, this is Mask of Gristlebrand. Uh, it costs one and two black. This is a legendary artifact equipment. Equip creature has flying and lifelink. And whenever equip creature dies, you may pay X life, where X is its power. If you do, draw X cards, and it equips for three. 
Right. If this um, if this had a lower equip cost, like maybe there would be some corner cases. But I think we're just right. looking at a card that has a great effect and is too expensive. And you know, CDH is littered with those. Yeah. That that is what differentiates CDH from casual. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. This is most often a very expensive skull clamp. Is really what this is going to yeah. do. I was thinking. I wonder if this is good in some type of Dargo strategy. The issue is you have to kind of be like for this to be good, you have to cheat on the equip cost. So maybe you have to be in like. Boros, but you have to be Blacks, or maybe you're like Mardus, or maybe you're in like Timna Dargo, and you can sacrifice your Dargo and draw many cards with this, but... There's, there's just, just better, better equipment. There's just better things, right? There's just better. Pay X life, draw X cards. Those are great words. If you can figure out how to break this somehow, that's great. I don't know. I don't. Never I don't know how. This is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, like, there's there's good words on the card, so I think it's worth thinking about. Off the top of my head, I don't know. That's what I would do with it, and I don't think that's very good. But it has got good words on it. I just don't know if the mana cost is too high. That being said. I main deck naturalize in my draft decks because of this card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this card is f freaking terrifying. Otherwise, hey, oh my, it's in in limited. It's a nightmare, right? Oh, yeah. It's unbeatable. This card. I've had many. I've had it kill me many times. You get this thing flying lifelink, and then also you can draw cards. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. So that was our last black card. That was our last black card. So we're gonna move on to red here. So uh, Carth cathartic. Pyre is one in a red for an instant, and you get to choose one. Cathartic Pyre deals, deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker, or you can discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. I like this one. I mean, so do I. I like, I like a braid already. A braid is just weirdly does enough, and does the modal everything. stuff yeah. is really important. I think destroy target artifact is probably a better second modal option than um, than. Uh, rummage two is it rummage two or loot two? No, it's it's, it's, it's rummage, rummage two. yeah, discard yeah. two. Then rummage two, yeah. I, so I think it's a little worse than a braid, yeah. but not much. So yeah. decks that are running a braid and wish they had a second copy of a braid, like mm, Brawl and Shabraz is the one that comes to mind. A oh, deck yeah. that specifically benefits off of discarding and drawing. You might want this instead of a braid or alongside a braid. Um, a braid is very good. Uh, the artifact is probably, like you said, more relevant than the planeswalker and the two cards draw two cards that many. But if you're looking to discard and you're looking to turn yeah. through your deck, you're this in might white. Be not like maybe if you're like playing other effects in white that allow you to get rid of artifacts enchantments. Sure, like they don't yeah, necessarily yeah, exactly. Need a braid? You could do this instead in that situation. Yeah, if you're in green, you're already playing the green artifact and enchantment right, removal, yeah, and so you want yeah your your red cards to draw you cards. Does this ever help breach lines, or do you just always want burning in Korea as your non wheel? I think yeah, this is an option in breach decks, right? It helps you fill up your yard. It helps you get through it. It, it has the issue of like, is it charm? Which to me, is it charm? Is is a card that seems like it should be really really good. It does a bunch of really good things, and it yeah. never is for yeah. some reason. Because it never does any of those things enough. Like, it's right. card disadvantage. Two mana is, like, whatever, because you already put two mana into it. The card disadvantage is the issue with this one. The yeah. same rate is good on Faithless Looting, because Faithless is one mana. Uh, but at this rate, Cathartic Reunion is it's discard just... two, draw three. Yeah. But this one, that Cathartic Reunion can't kill uh, Dranath Magistrate, and this card can, so... Mm -hmm. But the cards that want Cathartic Reunion don't care about creatures in play. The Thunder Communion is also a sorcery, which is... That's also true. Oh, that's true. Okay, that is true. This is all magic is, is if this, then that. The card is going to be a little bit good this way, a little bit good in that way. You have to pick which one is best for you. I'm probably picking a braid more often than not over this yeah. card, but there are there are times that I'll, I'll probably go to this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those corner case scenarios, I'll see you there. Um, all right, so the next one we're going to talk about is Curse of Shaken Faith. This is an enchantment or a curse. You get to enchant a player. It's one in a red, by the way. Uh, and whenever enchanted player casts a spell other than the first spell they cast each turn or copies a spell, Curse of Shaken Faith deals two damage to them. So this is the red curse of silence. Um, stop storm. Yes. That's the big one. Yes, partially stop storm. Yeah. I think um, y you play uh, Jessica Ishai, right? Yes. And and that to me is like it's kind of weirdly doing the same thing as Ishai, where it's not going to feel like that much damage or that much threat right off the bat, but it can really stack up. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think I think it's it's borderline, and I think very few decks want it. But 
it's it's playable. It, it's definitely. I, I feel like if, if you're in mono red and you want a silence, like this is a really sure. cool silence. But again, it, it it only hits one player. It's only one so player. So you can sit there. And it's not any silence. They can still fight through it. They can still no, do it. True. They'll just get no damage. That's it is so it, much worse. I yeah. forgot. I was yeah. thinking everyone. No, no. It only it only hits one player. But like you can also change the direction of attacking creatures from you to somebody else this way then too because in that way hey you know yeah i know i'm playing ad nauseum but that guy over there you know we can really stop him from playing spells for the rest of the game if you just attack them instead so maybe you can politic your way somewhere with this with this card but i think that this card shuts off storm that's what this card does if you have a storm player at your table and you want to shut them down this card shuts off storm it, they can't go through all the copies they can't go infinite brain freeze because they'll kill themselves um, that's I think what this card will do yeah, if anything. exactly so so we'll, we'll see how good that is We'll see how good that is someone smarter than me. will figure that out um, All right, so our next card is visions of ruin This is three and a red for a sorcery each opponent sacrifices an artifact for each artifact sacrifices Sacrifice this way you create a treasure token it flashes back for eight and two red. This spell costs X less to cast this way, where X is the greatest mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. So this is one I wanted to include specifically because I run Jessica Dargo and I'm in love with that deck. And that is probably the best case scenario for this. And that is not the best mono red deck. So it's probably not good for most decks. The, the front face, you know, you, you just do not want to pay for for this effect. It is too much. Um, so really the only time that this feels good is if you have a very expensive commander like Dargo, where with the flashback cost, it is going to leave you neutral on mana for casting it. So when it feels like you can cast it for free that's pretty good i'm probably going to try it out in there but i don't expect it to be really strong and it's probably going to be on the chopping block when i see another card i really like well there you go you can cast cathartic pyre to discard it there you go and then draw two cards and then boom can't there do that go. with a braid sucker yeah, exactly <laughs> another only issue with this one is each opponent sacrifices an artifact treasures are very common so more often than not people are just going to sacrifice a treasure or their mana vault that's tapped or something like that um, but yes, I agree. If you can cast this from your graveyard for free and get rid of three artifacts and one of them is a stacks piece, that's pretty good. And it, it, it ramps you in that case then yeah. too. It, it would ramp you if all three players have artifacts to sacrifice. And you have an eight mana commander. Dargo is seven. Dargo is seven, so which is why I say he's neutral on the mana. Oh, with yeah, it. I guess that's true. Because so, okay. you'll pay three from the graveyard. For the I don't know what cost. commander has eight power. I don't... Eight mana? It, is it... Is, it's mana, right? Is it mana? X is the greatest mana value of a commander you own. Oh, yeah. I don't. I have no idea. Yeah. Dar 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 Dargo is like idea. the only one with a mana cost that high that gets played. Yeah. Right? right? Kamal. Kamal, yeah. Sure. Kamal. Maybe if you're playing Kamal. But Kamal is heavy stacks all creatures all the time. Yeah, what is, mean, you Kamal is the green one. It's like eight mana. It's a overrun every turn. It's, a, it's one of the new partners. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Okay. That's yeah. right. Kamal would but be But that a... card is playing every Thali effect it can probably. And it's not interested in this yeah. card maybe. That's also true. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to move on then. So that was our last red card. Uh, and we're going to take a quick dip into green over here uh, for Augur of Autumn. This is one and two green for a human druid. It's a two, three. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play lands from the top of your library, and it has Coven. As long as you control three or more creatures with different powers, you can cast creature spells from the top of your library too. I think this card is great in casual. It is a definite all-star for casual. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it's probably not quite there for CDH, but they've printed Vizier of the Menagerie, um, Corsair of Crufix, and Oracle of Moldiah, which all do similar things where they sort of let you draw in green. You get to play off the top of your library. And this does um, both of those halves, if you can get the Coven trigger on, for less mana. So it's pretty close. I, I mean, I don't know what it would take for it to be in CDH for me. I think it would need to cost two instead of three. Sure. Double yeah. green and no generic, maybe. Um, but it is almost there, and there may be some mono mono green decks that want to run this if they're struggling with um, moving through the deck. Yeah, yeah, I could I could see that for sure. It does a lot of things, not none of them well, but it does a lot of things. It does do a lot of things, yeah. So I totally agree with all that. All right, the next one is Turn the Earth. This is one green for an instant. You can choose up to three cards in target graveyards. Uh, the owner of those cards shuffle them into their libraries, and you gain two life. And you can flash it back for one into green. 
Yeah, so this is good um, with like Hermit Druid decks or something where like, like Protein Hulk decks if you need to shuffle specific key pieces back in or if you're doing Time Twister loops like you're trying to draw through your deck and you need something to put cards back into your library. It also acts as um, like specific spot graveyard removal if you need to get rid of someone's trying to go off with Underworld Breach and you have a perfect moment that you can snipe three cards out of their yard or they're trying to reanimate a Razakath that can stop them there. Um, those uses are going to be a little bit m m less often, I think. Um, but this card does a little, it does a little. Being able to flash it back is helpful, is what is nice about this card. Absolutely. Because a lot of times, like, just having this effect and nothing else on it, just... Like, the two life isn't an upside, so, like, it feels like it's half of a card of value you can get out of it in a lot of situations, but uh, the, the flashback is, is very nice. It is very good. I, I think, you know, th they could only charge one for this effect because it's just too niche. Um, the problem for me is that they printed Endurance, and you can just pay zero for this effect, which is yeah. much more appealing than paying one for this effect, so I think... I, I think there are very few decks that want Endurance and this card, and I'm always picking Endurance over this card. There are, it also is important to note that this card is basically Better Memories Journey, which is a card that does see a little bit of play in strange decks that specifically need that effect to be able to shuffle things back in. Memories Journey is two mana, and then you flash it back for a green. This mana is one on the front, and then you flash it back for two, um, and, and the life gain, I guess, is there. But So Memories Journey is a card that has seen play already, so maybe this one could see some play in the same vein. True, yeah, yeah. All right, so that was it for green. We're gonna move. Poor, poor green. Yeah, <laughs> you did your best. It's fine. Green's gotten a lot of good stuff recently. We didn't necessarily need a ton of stuff for green. <laughs> That's true. And we got a lot of stuff for blue. So we're gonna move on to big surprise. There's eight cards for the blue. Yeah, really. Um, well, here's another blue card. Uh, we're gonna move on to multicolor cards here. This is Arcane Infusion. So this is a blue and a red for an instant. You can look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order and you can flash it back for three a blue and a red it's kind of like impulse it's it's kind of like kind impulse. Of. Yeah. can't find you a land like impulse can. but you can flash it back can't flash back impulse there you go That's, that is all well snapcaster you, yeah. you could flash back impulse this one you don't need a snapcaster when was the last time you ran snapcaster in a cedh deck not never but to be honest i think it's not a bad card i think snapcaster is pretty good especially if you're playing like like uh the black rituals that sacrifice creatures like culling ritual and stuff i think snapcaster is okay but yeah, I haven't i'm surprised actually played it yet. never gets played it never the gets problem played with ever under, the problem is that underworld breach is the card that you want to build around so get Getting rid of that ritual for good is really dangerous a lot of the time. I guess also a lot of the counter spells that we're using or like cheating their costs, like Force of Will or Fierce Guardian Chip and Snapcaster can't help flashback those. So that's one reason why it's a little bit less, but I don't know. I think Snapcaster is very good. This card, Arcane Fusion, I don't know how good it is. You have to be really heavy on instants. You have to have many, many, many instants and sorceries in your deck. Um, but if you are, if you do have many, this card I think is good. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think it gets far enough into the deck, like when, especially because you have so many tutors for instants and sorceries in blue already, yeah. um, and Strixhaven just gave us another decent yeah. one. It's so true. I, I think you just run the reliable yeah, tutors exactly. over this more or less. And like, time. how bad of a situation are you in that you're flashing this back? Five mana is insane right. for this effect, and yeah. You're it's going probably... like, okay, well, here's my opt, yeah. or I guess consider now. And then I'm gonna pass the turn. Like it's yeah, it's yeah. it's it's not it's not as good as impulse, and impulse rarely sees play. But it is yeah. similar to impulse. Um, and there are situations that I can create in my head where this card is good. If you're playing Seedborn Muse, or if you're you know really looking on almost an entirely instant sorcery deck, maybe this is an option. If you're looking for extra turns or something, something like that, this card's okay for. So this next one, I totally forgot had flashback i can't believe this card has flashback who gave this card flashback this is dire strain rampage who gave this card flashback it wasn't me. this is one a red and a green for a sorcery destroy target artifact enchantment or land if a land was destroyed this way its controller may search their library for up to two basic land cards put them onto the battlefield tap then shuffle otherwise its controller may search their library for a basic land put it onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle What's important to note about this card is you can destroy your own land and find two lands. So it can act as Harrow, which is not a card that sees any CDH play, but is a card that is great in casual commander. And it can also destroy your opponent's stuff, which is good. Well, but Harrow um, brings your land in untapped, which is what makes it so much more reasonable. And is an instant. And is an instant. So this yes. is a lot more like Roiling Regrowth from a relatively recent set. Yeah. I'm not sure where. Battles um, and not battles on the card. Zendikar Rising. Zendikar, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, 
that was also an instant. So yeah. in, in the ramping category, it, it's really a worst case scenario. But it is nice that it has flexibility and it can hit other targets. Yeah. I think it's at its best if it's destroying an artifact or enchantment. Yeah. But you can also kill a Gaia's Cradle. You can get rid of, you know, it can get rid of a stacks piece. Yeah. Um, uh, red green. Important. I think it is important that red green gets good cards, right? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, red, I mean, red green already has a ton of cards that are much more efficient at destroying artifacts and enchantments and lands than this card is. This card can do all of those things, and you can flash it back. If you're in mid range central, this card might be an option. There you go. I feel like Rada. Rada is the only sure, kind yeah. of deck. Sure, where, yeah. Maybe Rada would like something like this. Pretty fringe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're really at the fringes there. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about Faithful Mending now. So this is a white and a blue for an instant. You draw two cards, you gain two life, then discard two cards. Not necessarily in the order that I said them, but <laughs> that's basically what it is. And then you can flash it back for one, a blue, and a white then. It's faithless looting, but it's twice as much. Right. And, of course, the, the I love the wording play with that. Faithful Mending is yeah. just, yeah, it's, it's a flavor. <laughs> yeah, wording. you're very funny, Wizards. We get it. You're very clever. <laughs> Great job, guys. Uh, yeah, Faithless Looting is a card. At one mana, Faithless Looting is, is, is solid in, in the decks that want it. At two mana, it's probably too expensive. It's but at instant speed at two mana. It's at instant speed, which is something. And Brawl and Shabra's card, you know, decks like that yeah. that want to specifically be either discarding, discarding cards or drawing cards. This card could be an option for. Yeah, exactly. Pretty good in those niche decks. Yeah. 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 And if you're really trying to go into Underworld Breach, like, like if you're not Jessica is shy, but like maybe, I don't know, Kaikar. I don't know. Sure. I don't yeah. play Kaikar, but maybe. Um, realistically, I can see it. Kaikar does love casting instants. That is right? a thing. Yeah. So. Realistically, two mana spells in CDH, the bar is just so incredibly high. Realistically, you're not you're not spending two mana on yeah. cards like this. You're, I, this is a one, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather just put consider in my deck, and I can't even flash that back. Right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. One. Yeah. One mana effect is just is just going to be like Thought Scour. I would. I would right, probably want yeah, more than this exactly, or something. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, we're moving past it. We're moving past it. We're going to talk about uh, a card that is near and dear to Tyler's heart. Uh, Florian Valderan Scion. I don't know. I hope it is. <laughs> it's uh, one, a black, and a red for a legendary creature, Vampire Noble. Uh, it's got first strike, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponents lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. This card is near and dear to my heart. I loved building this deck for the channel and playing it, even though I piloted it pretty badly. But, <laughs> but um, I think it has a lot of potential because being able to look at a lot of cards and then pick one is just something you really want to do in CDH. So it's not a great rate. Um, the fact that he costs three and then you need to find a way to get damage through um, is a little frustrating. But in our games, I was not having too much trouble doing that. Now, that wasn't against normal CDH decks at the table. But I think this ha has a reasonable chance of like being sort of a tier three um, CDH deck. Like I, I do think he's a pretty reasonable commander. And if you play Brawl, he is so much fun in Brawl. <laughs> I have played him in, in Standard Brawl for a while on Arena now. He, he lets you dig very deep. If you can get 10, 15, 20 cards deep, you're almost tutoring at that point, or at least yeah. you're probably finding a tutor because you're in Black Red, so you're running many tutors. So what you did a couple times, you found Demonic Tutor and Wishclaw Talisman off of him. So you're able to just find a tutor to get whatever you want. It's pretty good. So I tried it with a reanimate um, Razakath type shell, and I think you, you could probably try other shells with this because it's the thing is, it's not only reanimate that wants to dig through the deck and yeah. find these specific cards so i look forward to seeing other people's builds of this guy. it would be interesting to see like a stacks version of this deck that was looking to just find more creatures and have those creatures be stacks pieces and use those creatures to deal more damage oh, and that's funny get deeper yeah in your i deck. like that um, I would be interested to see what something like yeah. that would look like because that's pretty different from what you did, and I think that could be something. But again, another color combination that does not see a lot of love in terms of like CEDH playable commanders, but like between Prosper and Florian, now we have like two actually like good, good playable black red commanders. Now. <laughs> the Croxa and Grenzo pilots over the world are very upset it's with very you right upset, now. But yeah, I shouldn't talk. I got, Ooh, yep, sorry. I, got I had two patrons wreck me with Grenzo at the last <laughs> oh, really? Patreon play day. Yeah. It's the honestly, it was the first time I'd ever seen a black red list win a game. Yeah, Doomsday is just really good, right? It was Doom, Grenzo Doomsday. Yeah, yeah, Grenzo Doomsday. Yeah, and I just I Doomsday is a good card. More yeah. people should be playing Doomsday. Yeah, it is good. It is good. All right. So speaking of good, here's old Stick Fingers. Uh, it's X uh, black and a green for a legendary creature horror. 
When you cast the spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creatures revealed this way on into your graveyard and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Old stick fingers, power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Um, which one of you knows the line? Uh, I could roughly, we don't have to go through the entire line because it's legitimately like eight or nine steps minimum. But effectively, if you put only three creatures in your deck and your creatures are Witherbloom Apprentice, Young Necromancer, and Razaketh, with any reanimation spell, you can win the game. So effectively, you cast your commander for five total mana, black, green, and X is three. You flip your entire deck until you flip those creatures. I guess I am going through the line. You cast your reanimation spell on the young py- on, the, on the young necromancer. Then the young necromancer comes in. You exile two cards out of your yard. Then the young necromancer brings in the Razakath. And then from there, you start sacrificing the young the young necromancer and the old stick fingers to find mana with LED. Uh, and then you have the Witherbloom Apprentice and you find Chain of Smog and you do the Chain of Smog combo from there. Um, there's a couple more steps to make sure that you have enough mana or whatever. It's not a super um, durable deck. It's it's rather fragile. It folds to basically every stacks piece. But off of five mana plus whatever mana you would need for your reanimation spell, so reanimate or animate dead, um, you can win the game. So it reminds me of Dina in that respect, which we also played on this channel. And it's kind of like a fragile um, Golgari deck that you know if if that's really what you want to do, then like this is a great option. It's it's perfectly good. Very and it's very interesting that in CDH black green is that it's fragile agile combo but in yeah. the rest of the world black green is not that resilient in, yeah, yeah in, in yeah. vintage in not vintage but modern modern legacy standard black green is always like the mid-range deck right but yeah. that is not the case in cdh blue and red do mid-range much better white too um but black is like the very fragile combo deck i find that very interesting for some reason there's also a huge problem with this card which i don't know why but i really want it to be old stick fingers like ol apostrophe <laughs> yeah like, not old. yeah i don't know why old I stick just, fingers come on man if it's supposed to be like a scarecrow or whatever like you got to give it a little twang like it's it should be old stick fingers this one's certainly the weirdest old stick fingers is a very strange word it's definitely the weirdest one. Oh, it would be old if it was like friendly oh there's good old, old stick, stick fingers. fingers but like this is supposed this is this old, old stick fingers. yeah exactly yeah. It's supposed to be intimidating. Like, I feel like you're reading too much into that. You don't know that he's not friendly. Look at that art. Look at that this guy. Is magic. You could give like, him he's a He's waving. Hug. Look, he's so waving. Yeah, he's happy. <laughs> yeah, you're just being judgmental. Old stick fingers is good. Old stick fingers is good, right? Gitrog Monster does something not similar, but Gitrog Monster does fragile black green combo. Dina does fragile black green combo. There are other commanders that do fragile black green combo. This one just does this version of black green combo. Yeah. If you want to win with Azkath in this way. Yeah, exactly. Pick your poison. All right, so our next card is Rem Carlaros. Maybe that's how you say it. Uh, he, uh, Star Wars Slayer. It's one, a red and a white. Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> legendary creature, human knight. It's a 2-3 with flying in haste. If a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage. If a spell would deal damage to an opponent or an op permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. Pyroclasm in the deck. I was going to say, speaking of, um, oh my god, I just lost it. The, the bajillion mana card that deals 13 damage to every creature. Oh, uh, Blasphemous, Blasphemous Act. Act. Yeah, plus, yeah. thank you. We just talked about this. But yeah, all those kind of cards, it is great with. And interestingly enough, in Limited in this set, there is such a card that deals five damage to each creature. And I have seen that Wombo Combo happen at a store, and I have seen someone look very salty. <laughs> um, yeah, this card is very good. It, it protects the Pyroclasming from your things, if you Pyroclasm, and it does extra damage to their things. So it gets to get rid of their... I mean, I Janeth Magistrate, but you already have your commander out, but it gets to get rid of three toughness things on your opponent's side of the board, your pyroclasms. Um, that could be something. Boros is probably going to be, Winota is just going to be your better option for Boros, but this deck will do a very different thing, I think, than Winota does. Well, and, and I mean, some people don't want to play three-hour games every game, and so maybe they don't want to play Winota. <laughs> maybe Winota, this is Winota, Winota can win pretty well. And like, well, I guess in the games that I've been, Winota has I don't taken know, forever. Like, how, would, how would this win the game then? Because I feel like Winota would still be able to win a little bit yeah, that's quicker what, that's than That's what this Ram. lacks, is a win con. I think this suffers from the yeah. feather problem of having very relevant text where it can do something cool, but like, how do you turn that into a victory? 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. It doesn't draw cards and it's not a combo piece. Yeah. Right. So you already have to have some other combo or it kind of fills the role of like stacks piece almost in the way that it makes your or maybe haymaker. I don't really know what role it fills, but um pyroclasm the, the deck is what yeah. role it could fill Cuz like it's just spells that would deal damage. Right. So like there's very few options that opponents would have that would actually have this matter. But now your lightning bolt can kill Krom. <laughs> right. There we go. Just unfortunately though, there's just not that many great pyroclasm effects. There's like, you know, a enough enough for decks that want to run one or two, but there's not enough for an entire deck. No. Of them. And the problem is that they're all at three mana and would all deal four damage to things, and that's not the Those threshold. Not, that there's we a care couple about. that are two mana that deal like two damage to non artifact creatures, shit like that. But oh, yet, that's true. Yeah, there are like two that do that. But the, the Anger of the Gods ones, those are just not. Even at its best, at the Anger of the Gods, four damage to all of your opponent's creatures and not yeah, yours for exactly. three mana. That's okay, I guess. I don't know. Um,. It could be if you're in control. This is like a, this is a deck that we haven't seen. The deck that this deck could be good for yeah. doesn't really exist right now. So I, it's hard to say how good it could be. Maybe we in don't like know. five years they're gonna print something that works very well with Maybe, this. Maybe yeah. We're gonna totally call it. We then, said so. we called it. We said this card was good. So I'm gonna put my money on it now and just ride that out. Yep. All right. So our next card is Rite of Oblivion. This is a white and a black for a sorcery, and as an additional cost to cast the spell, you must sacrifice a non-land permanent. But you get to exile target non-land permanent. You can also flash this back for two, a black, and a white. I like this card, but probably not enough to run it. I think it just costs too much. Um, but in stuff, in anything where you're making a ton of creatures that you have just lying around to, to sacrifice this stuff, um, it's decent. Exile is pretty good. Yeah, Esper Farm. I don't know. I, I really, this card is ideal in like an aristocrat strategy, which doesn't really exist in CDH. Although Tesa Orz of Scion did recently make it onto the Brewers' corner of the deckless database, I don't know. This if is this, really good in that. I, I think I feel like this type of card will be great in a card like in a deck like that that wants has creatures that it's always willing to get rid of um, and wants to be able to kill a lot of things. Um, this card can exile. Target non-land permanent. Anything. There's so much that There's that so is. Ma yeah. so many things. My biggest thing is that too. I just wish it was instant speed. It yeah. could. It could be. They could have done that. It, it wouldn't have been yeah. unreasonable. I, I, at sorcery speed is the biggest issue. Sorcery speed removal is just. Oh uh, no! Shit. I, I drafted this card. This can't be at sorcery at instant speed. It would, it be, would be so good. insane. Yeah. It'd have to oh, be a yeah. mythic. Yeah. This, this 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 card was really good in the deck that I had. It oh in, sure, and, and sealed. Yeah, this card was sealed. True. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, uh, we're going to move on to a Planeswalker, our first Planeswalker here. This is Teferi, who slows the sunset. Uh, it's two, a white, and a blue for a legendary Planeswalker, Teferi. Comes into play with four loyalty. Uh, it's plus one. You can choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permanence you control. Tap the chosen permanence you don't control. You gain two life. Minus two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And minus seven, you get an emblem with untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step and you draw a card during each opponent's draw step. Holy So many fuck. words. <laughs> There's so much. Um, this combos with Chain Veil, am I correct? Yes, right? it you does. You can untap so, Chain Veil as long as you have enough mana to retap. What's nice is that you get to untap your Grim Monolith and the Chain Veil, and then like as long as, and then your land. So already with the Chain Veil, you don't get infinite mana, but you get infinite Teferi untaps. So I don't know if you have something else you can do with. Why this. do you get to untap both? The chain veil and, and grim monolith. If you can tap up to oh, no, one right. of each, up yeah. to one target artifact. Up to one target artifact, one target creature. You can't oh, tap the why grim. Yeah, why you didn't can't they just the say up to one permanent of each permanent type? Like that would have been know. so much easier. Because you can't untap a, an, an enchantment or a planeswalker. You, yeah. Well, you can try so to. What? Why not? Yeah, you can. I mean, you can. You I can tap them. But. I feel like that's like they want to make the templating so that Arena doesn't make you accidentally untap your enchantment when you don't want to or something like that's that. That's true, because on Arena, you would have to choose zero Planeswalkers right. and choose zero enchantments. Oh, man. Yeah. Thinking like a programmer, I hate doing that. <laughs> right? yeah. uh, this card, I, I, again, I think it, it can be free, right? If you cast it and you can untap enough things, yeah. it can be close to free. If you can untap a land and an artifact, it only costs one mana. Um, if you're in a Seedborn Muse deck, if you want to be untapping every turn and that ultimate is appealing to you, that could be something that you do too. Um, and then it also can get you some cards. I, I mean, it's a Planeswalker. Planeswalkers are rarely good enough to make the cut in our format. But ones that can yeah. effectively uh, 
kind of cost less mana than it doesn't it looks like it costs four mana but it really costs like one or two mana it works really well if you have doubling season because you can ultimate it right away so if that's what you're trying to do so if you're running a cdh with doubling season you can stop listening now <laughs> <laughs> well, you finally found the commander that's good there we go yes finally something that a, a planeswalker that works with that card i was like wait with a commander like yeah. <laughs> then you can't even run doubling yeah. season now i just get a seed board muse which i already have all right we're gonna talk about Tovalar Dire Overlord next. So this is one a red and a green for a legendary creature, human werewolf. Um, whenever a wolf or a werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. It's a 3-3 three, three with Daybound, by the way. And when it flips over, it's Tovalar the Midnight Scourge, which is a werewolf that still says whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And it also says X, red, and green. Target wolf or werewolf you control gets plus X, plus zero, and gains trample until end of turn. And now it's a 4-4 four, four with Nightbound. It's a day man and a night man. Uh -huh. um, yeah, th so this is the deck that I played on our episode, our gameplay when we played through Midnight Hunt. It's kind of a shitty Edric. Um, Edric like, lets you draw off of every creature that deals damage. This card's only off of wolves and werewolves, but it does have it. Uh, what? Oh, I was just going to say, but Edric also lets your opponents draw. That's true. Edric also does let your opponents yeah, draw. Yeah, but this card makes you play rough. werewolves in your yeah. deck. <laughs> this deck. Yeah, the card makes you play werewolves. This card is not blue. Yeah, this card is not blue. Awesome. Significant downside. But on the flip side, if you can get infinite mana and you have three wolves and werewolves, you can infinitely pump those werewolves and attack your opponents with the trampling werewolves. Um, Dockside and Teamer Sabretooth is an easy way to do that in Gruul. Um, there are other ways to do it if you'd like. But um, So that's the thing that I like about this card. It is both card draw and an infinite mana outlet, which are necessary pieces for cdh decks um you having to basically kind of be in some sort of tribal just to make it work you don't have to play a ton of werewolves i probably play a little bit more than would be advisable i decided to make the deck the best werewolf deck that i could make it so that it would function at a cdh table um you could go a route that really just only includes the one mana wolves and werewolves as draw pieces and don't really worry about any of the other wolves um and then just make a gruel deck around that that's another option um but yeah i don't know tovar i think he does enough i think he's cool he's good powerful i think i had good bones it is a little slow in the in the current meta but yeah. a lot of things are yeah. But they definitely hit the mark that they needed to go for for a werewolf commander. Certainly, though. Yeah. yeah. And in CDH, if you can slow the game down enough, I really think that's where this card shines, is if you can stack the board out and slow everyone else down, your werewolves get much better. Also... The, the Nightbound thing is much better than I originally realized. I had no idea, like I said, that you they flip immediately. That makes this card yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, that is crazy. Um, yeah, to, I, yeah. Then you have to track it. <laughs> then, then you have to track it, which also is fucking true, annoying. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we have one final card we're going to talk about. Last one. Here we Last go. Last one. All right, so this is our only colorless card that we're going to talk about, and it's actually good. It's Moon Silver Key. This is two mana for an artifact, and for one mana, you can tap it and sacrifice it to search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Do you guys, can you think of any commanders that care about artifacts with mana abilities? I, uh, I could, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single one. Um, I play Kinnon and have for a long time, probably too long. Um, but I really love that deck, and this this is a great card in Kinnon. It Fine. goes Bizarre and finds, yeah. That, that, and that's what you want to do. The, the whole deck is fine, Basalt Monolith. At its worst, this card is a three mana mana crypt, which I think is probably yeah. playable in most decks. And a three mana mana crypt that you can split up the mana cost. You can just find Honestly, mana that's a fair mana crypt. That's a like. fair mana crypt, yeah. <laughs> three mana for a, a mana artifact that makes two mana. Or you can find Jewel Lotus, you know what I mean? You can find even yeah. better. There's more artifacts that make more mana than that. Right, so I, I'm not sure if Kinnon is truly the only deck that runs this. There may be I think um, Godo. a couple others, yeah, like Godo, that really care about the mana generation enough. Godo is, is definitely one of them um but i you know that's probably it but right. for those decks it is very good especially for an uncommon what yes very very surprising very precarious for precarious um in in decks that can search for artifacts you know decks that have access to black cards and demonic tutor and stuff like that it, it maybe not so much but in low color decks that want to find specifically what this card can find this card's an a plus choice mm -hmm. yeah this is actually probably this and malevolent hermit are probably my two stellar picks for the for the format of these cards will almost certainly see play in cdh let us know in the comments down below what your stellar picks <laughs> for this format are
<laughs> yeah, really do. I don't know. I I, I want to know. I want to know yeah. so badly if Florian makes the cut. Like I think it's right on the cusp. I think it's close. I think it's close. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, this episode was sponsored by Moxfield. Don't make sure to check out the link down below. Uh, it'll give you all the cards that we talked about today, and even more importantly, you can buy the entire deck. You can buy all the cards. There's a button. You can just click buy deck. It'll bring up a little menu. You can buy it at TCG Player or on Card Kingdom. You and can alter it too. The I price think, yeah. comparison is right there. So if you want to know which one's cheaper, you can do that, and I'll just bring it right up in your browser, and you can purchase it from there. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $50 patrons. John117, Jan Wildfang, Brent Ray, Adrian Grimm, Playboy P, Tommy the Oddball, Swampy McGee, Peter Larson, Angelo Corsi, Lachlan Fear, Cameron James, Jor Mags, Jimmy Midnight, Matthew Sorensen, Baby Jeebus, and Mario Hernandez. Thanks, y'all. Check out our bonfire store for our awesome t shirts, sweatshirts, and our fall selection, too. If you want to check out any of the cards you saw today, you can do so at our Moxfield link down below. Our Alter Sleeves affiliate link gets you 5% off your order, so check that out there. You can check out our website, Play to win mtg.com we have play mats coming very soon we still have a couple of deck boxes and tokens so check that out there sleeves are also be coming soon too there's some stuff coming there's, there's a stuff lot coming. of things in the works thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys next time bye